welcome to the third part of Unit 3. In this part, we're going to do two more examples of projectile motion. In the first example, pretty much we're going to want to calculate everything that we possibly could. And we're going to need to make use of symmetry and velocity at the top. So for this example, we have a baseball hit nearly straight up into the air with a speed of 22 meters per second. And based on that statement alone, we want to know how high does it go? How long is it in the air? We want to think about the velocity at the top and what is the velocity when it returns to its original height? Okay. So step one is to draw a picture. So here we are moving upward at 22 meters per second. Let's let up be positive because that's traditional, which means our acceleration is uh, going to be negative. At some time later that we don't know, we hit the top of the motion. Now think about the motion of a ball just thrown upward really quick. Um, it's thrown upward. It moves up. As it moves up, its velocity decreases in magnitude until for an instant at the very, very tippy top, it stops moving. And then in the next instant, it's now moving downward. And as it moves downward, it's going to gain velocity. The magnitude of the velocity is going to increase. So at that tippy, tippy top instant, when it's at its maximum possible height, the velocity at the top is zero. Okay. Down here, this was our t equals zero point, and we might as well that, let that be position equals zero. At the top, we have a question mark on how long is it in the air, so what is t? And we also have a question mark for how high does it go, so that's asking about x. And with that, I have everything in my picture that I could possibly put there. So I get to start my grocery list. Okay. So um, going down, position at t, I don't know. It's something I want to know. Position at t equals 0, I let equal 0 down here. Um, velocity at the top, we just argued that that had to be 0. Velocity at t equals 0 is 22 meters per second upward, so it's positive. Acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, but is downward in our positive coordinate system, so it comes in with a negative sign. And how long it takes to get to the top is also the next question mark. Okay. Now, I have my picture, I have my grocery list. So at this point, I need to think about how I'm going to find these two unknowns. So let's go through the equations. Let's talk about the bottom one, the average velocity one. That one, again, does not help me at all with this problem. So I'm not even going to think about the average velocity equation. If I think about the x equals x naught equation, it would let me find how high it goes if I knew the time. But I don't know the time, at least not yet. It is a nice equation because it's already solved for position. So that's it does have that going for it. If I go down to the v equals v naught equation, then I see that equation with a little bit of effort would allow me to find time. That seems promising. And then the third equation, the v squared equals v naught squared, would allow me to find position without having to find time first. But I have to do a good bit of algebra to rearrange that equation. So it really seems to me that the best route through this problem is to use the v equals v naught equation to find time first and then use x equals x naught to find the, the height. So without further ado, I'm going to 
start here to find time. So 0 meters per second equals 22 meters per second minus 9.8 meters per second squared t. I'm going to take the 9.8 and move it to the other side along with its t. I'm going to divide both sides by 9.8. Oop, I lost the square. And that gives me, when you uh, divide that out, an answer for time of 2.24 seconds. Okay. Now you may be wondering about units again. So meters per second divided by meters per second squared. I have to get rid of the improper fraction. So I flip the denominator over and multiply it. This and this cancel that and that. Meters cancels meters, one factor second cancels the other factor second, and all I'm left with is a unit of seconds, exactly what I hoped for. Okay. Now I'm out of room on this slide, so I'm going to go to the next slide to find how long it was, or how high it was, uh, how high it went. So to do that, I use the x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared equation. Again, it's not my only option, but it does have going for it the fact that it's already solved for the position. So the initial position we let be zero. The initial velocity was 22 meters per second. We now know the time was 2.24 seconds. Our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And again, time is 2.24 oops seconds, and I got to square that. And if you plug this all into your calculator, you will find that the final height is 24.69 meters. So this um, ball hit upward at 22 meters per second, went 24 and a half meters up in the air before coming to a stop. Okay, so there's that. Now, if you go back really quick, go back one slide, look at the question. It doesn't ask how long did it take to reach the top. The question is how long is it in the air? So let's make the bold assumption really quick that what's going on is we're hit upward at 22 meters per second. We're going up and obviously it's one dimensional but I'm going to move it over a little bit and we're coming back down. So the real question is how long does it take to return to this height? Okay, My argument by symmetry is that the time up has to equal the time down and the velocity up will equal the velocity down in magnitude, but the direction will have flipped. Now let's see if we can prove that. So for this scenario, we're going to redraw our um, grocery list just a little bit. I'm going to let x equal 0 because I'm returning to the same height. I'm going to let x naught equal 0 because that's what I assumed on the previous slide. V is one of the things I'm trying to find at this point. How long or how fast is it moving when it returns to the original height? V naught is still 22 meters per second. The acceleration is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the other thing I'm trying to find is how long does it take? So I don't know V and I don't know T but I can find them. I can find them. Okay. If you look at or think about now the three equations, the x equals x naught equation would allow me to find t. Not a problem. The v squared equals v naught squared equation seems like it would be promising because it should allow me to find v, but if you think about it, 
the x minus x naught portion of it is going to be zero, so all you're going to get is v squared equals v naught squared, which in itself is telling. It tells you that whatever v squared is has to equal v naught squared and kind of gives us an answer there. The last equation, the v equals v naught plus a t equation, again will allow me to find v. So rather than jumping to the v squared equals v naught squared equation, I'm going to go to the x equals x naught equation just to, again, prove the, the symmetry aspect that I keep arguing. So x equals 0, x naught equals 0, v naught is 22 meters per second times t plus 1 half, ooh, that wasn't a very good 2, there we go, better, times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared. Okay. So for this, I'm going to take 9.8 divide by 2, that gives me 4.9, and then I'm going to take that and move it to the other side. And I get 4.9 t squared equals 22 meters per second t. Okay. Well, I can cancel one factor of time. But when I do that, what that really is saying is that t equals 0 is a solution. Well, we already knew that. We knew that it was at x equals 0 at t equals 0. That's how we set it up. So that's not overly helpful. I crossed out too much there. I should have only crossed out the, um, the square, not the full t. So let me fix that. There we go. OK, so now we can proceed forward, and we get t equals 22 meters per second divided by 4.9. And I lost my units up here, so I'm going to insert them really quick. 4.9 meters per second squared. And if I put that into my calculator, I get uh, 4.49 seconds, which within round off error is double what we found for the time to go to the top. So that supports my statement that the time to the top, or from the bottom to the top, will equal the time from the top back to the bottom, as long as we have symmetry. With this t, again moving on to the next slide, I can calculate the um, velocity right uh, when it returns to the original height. So let's do that. And to do that, I'm going to want to use the v equals v naught plus a t formula. So v is what I want to find. v naught was 22 meters per second plus the acceleration, which was negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 4.49 seconds. And if I plug that into my calculator, I get negative 22 meters per second. So again, because of symmetry, because I'm going up and coming down to the exact same point, I find that my velocity going downward is the same magnitude as the velocity it originally went upward, but in the opposite direction as shown by that negative sign. And that completes that example. For the next example, I need to remind you of something that you may not have seen for a number of years. And that reminder is the statement of the quadratic formula. So remember, if you're working with the quadratic formula, if you have a formula that is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, and notice in this statement, a is not acceleration, it's just a number, it's a coefficient. x isn't necessarily a position, it's just the variable x. So if you have a formula that takes this form, then the solution is given by x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2a. We're going to need that in the next example. So without further ado, 
We're going to throw a ball upward at 20 meters per second, and we want to know how long does it take to reach a height of 10 meters. So drawing our picture at the bottom, we're moving upward at 20 meters per second. I'm going to let that be my zero point again. I'm going to let up be positive. Acceleration is again G downward. And sometime later, I know I'm now at a height of 10 meters. I don't know if I'm at the top, so I can't say anything about um, what the velocity is here. And what I want to know is how long does it take to get up there? With my drawing complete, I can now write my grocery list. So x equals um, 10 meters. x naught, I chose to be 0 meters. v, I don't know anything about. v naught is upward, so positive 20 meters per second. a is downward. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared, again, in the coordinate system that I have defined. How long does it take is a question of time. So now let's think about this. Again, the average velocity equation does not do me any good, so I'm going to throw it out. The x equals x naught equation will allow me to solve for time. Let's keep moving forward. The V equals V naught equation doesn't really help me because it involves time, which I want to know but don't know, and V, which I don't know. The V squared equals V naught squared formula would allow me to find V, but once I have V, I then have to do a second step to find time. That would be an acceptable route through this problem. It would also be a route that doesn't involve the quadratic formula, but it does make you, uh, to make it work correctly, you have to think about signs of your velocity, and you don't know exactly what's going on at the top. So, um, doable. Um, I'm going to flip to the next slide just so that I have lots of room to write. We're going to use the top equation. So. Um, x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. So I know that I am going up 10 meters. I chose my zero to be at um, x naught. My initial velocity was 20 meters per second multiplied by my unknown time plus one half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared t squared. And now I'm going to rearrange this formula. I'm going to take everything that isn't a zero and move it to the left hand side of the equation. So again 9.8 divided by 2 is 4.9. When I move that to the other side it becomes a positive 4.9 meters per second squared times t squared. When I move the 20 meters per second t to the other side, it becomes negative. The 10 meters is along for the ride, and I set that all equal to zero. And if you look, we now have a f uh, an equation that is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where in this case, a is 4.9 meters per second squared, B is negative 20 meters per second, and C is 10 meters, and the thing that is taking the place of the variable X is T. So with that, I can plug into the quadratic formula. So remember, T is going to equal negative B, so that's a negative negative 20 meters plus or minus the square root of negative 20 meters squared 
minus, I'm going to run out of room on the top line, so I'm going to move down below, 4 times our acceleration, which is 4.9 meters per second squared, times uh, C, which is 10 meters. All that is under the square root, and all of this has to be divided by 2 times 4.9 meters per second squared. And putting this into your calculator gives you two um, possible answers. The first answer is t equals 0 0.6 seconds. And the second answer is t equals 3.5 seconds. The 0.6 comes from the positive root. And the 3.5 comes from the negative root. So which answer is correct? Technically, both, because the problem doesn't specify exactly what it wants. So again, going to a, uh, oop, going to a new slide. I can't go to a new slide, so I guess I will go back to the previous slide where I have a little bit more space. Why do I get two times out, and why didn't two times technically be correct? Because the ball is going to go upward, it's going to pass the 10 meter mark, turn around and come back down. The 0 0.6 second answer is when it first crosses the 10 meter mark. And the second answer is when it comes back down and hits the 10 meter mark again at three and a half seconds. So if you had assumed that the velocity was zero at a height of 10 meters, you would not have gotten the correct answer for this problem because it's not at the top of the motion. That concludes this um, part of Unit 3. In the next part, we're going to look at graphing. What does all this look like from a graphical perspective?